Sprint Retrospectives training video presented by Steve Stedman, founder of AgiPlanner, agile and scrum management software. See agileplanner.com for more information. Part of the agile process is continually improving your own processes and getting better at what your team does while increasing velocity and quality. The Sprint Retrospective, or Retro, is one place to do this as a team. The team gets together with a focus on what they can do to improve process. This meeting is usually led by a Scrum Master and usually occurs at the end or after the end of a Sprint. There are three points of the Sprint Retrospective. The first one is things that we should stop doing. What type of things should we no longer continue to do? The whole point of this one is to find things in the process that aren't working, call them out, and figure out how to stop doing them. The next is things we should start doing. What should we start doing in the process that will make things run smoother? And finally, what are the things that we should continue doing? What are the things that we have changed recently that are working well that we want to continue doing? Now, you don't need to call out everything that you're going to continue doing because it's sort of assumed that most processes are in place. And as long as you don't change them, then you're continuing to do them. But this section is to specifically call out things that have changed recently that have worked well. What should we no longer continue to do? Every day there may be steps in your process that actually turn out to be counterproductive. Some of these may be things that you thought were a good idea at the time, but after doing them you realize that they really weren't. They're really not what you thought they would be. There may be other things that you learn from experience that just don't work. Some of these will impact devel the development team. Some will apply to the product owners or anyone else in the process. The purpose of this is to find things that aren't working and make a conscious decision to stop doing them and replace them with something better. Here's an example of a stop doing that could have come up at a retrospective. If you're working in a software as a service environment where a development team works Monday through Friday, when there's code changes that need to be deployed, it's not a really good idea to push those to the live system on a Friday. What that means is the developers, they work the week, they go home for the weekend, and then the IT team is on the hook for the weekend to sort out what goes wrong. So if you deploy code on a Friday, uh, the IT team doesn't always know what's going on with the code changes the developers have done, and they're on the hook to straighten that out. This would be one of those that if I was working in an environment where code was being deployed on a Friday, I would suggest that we stop doing that in order to provide the highest quality service for the customers. All that means is you have to shift the code deploys to be on a Monday instead of on the Friday. And Mondays get loaded up with a little bit more code to be released than usual. What should we start doing in our process? By starting something new or adding something new into the process, how can we get more done? How can we increase our velocity? Or how can we increase our transparency? There are things that individuals can and should be doing every day to improve their own processes. Those don't really apply here. This is more focused on process improvements that involve the entire team. Here are some examples of things that could fall into the start doing category. We should start performing sprint retrospectives at the end of a sprint so that we can improve our processes. I hope by the end of this video that that will be the goal of everyone watching that isn't already doing sprint retros. Here's another. We should start testing our system on mobile browsers to ensure compatibility. If the mobile browser is not available, we should at least use an emulator that simulates the screen size of the mobile device. This could save time for the developers and testers allowing work to get through the process the first time and not fail because it doesn't work on a mobile tablet. The continued doing discussion is focused on what we are doing that is working well that we should continue to do. Consider recent changes that are working well. Discussion on why these are working and if they're working well for everyone is usually included. If there was a change suggested to start doing something at the previous retro that the team decided to go with, and then it turns out that it worked really well for me and for the rest of the team, this is one that we would continue to do. Sometimes the discussion on continue doing may lead to a stop doing. For instance, if I love the change but the rest of the team hates it because it turned out to reduce the overall velocity, this may quickly evolve into a stop doing instead of a continue doing. And that's all right. That's the point of the conversation. Here is an example of a continue doing item. In the last sprint, we decided to start doing code reviews. 
This turns out that it's worked out very well, and we should consider continuing to, to do code reviews the same way we did in the last sprint. There may be some discussion about how well it is working. There might be small changes. But overall, the goal here is to come to a consensus with the team to determine if things that were changed recently should continue to be done. Is the sprint retro really just a witch hunt? Is it a way to just focus on who screwed up or who is not doing well? No, that is not the purpose of the sprint retro. The goal of the sprint retro is to focus on improving processes, not on complaining about people. Which of these example items would work best in the retro? Keep it in mind that it is focused on process, not to complain about people. First, let's kick John out of the sprint planning meetings because he just keeps talking about his ideas and nobody else gets a chance to talk. Or, let's time box each idea in the sprint planning so that everyone can participate equally. Which of these would be more productive in your sprint retro? How to measure success. For every change that comes out of a sprint retro, be sure to include how the success will be measured. Not every change leads to a success. In fact, some may actually make things worse. You can measure and modify the success of every change as needed in order to improve the overall process. Don't make too many changes. The goal of the sprint retro is not to completely rebuild your entire process every sprint. Instead, you should just be making small changes to continually improve the process. Keep the list of changes to a manageable level. Too many changes in a single sprint can lead to thrash and confusion of the team. It's okay if there's too many items on the list to discuss or too many suggestions to change at once. You can just let them ride until the next retro. You don't have to fix everything in just one sprint. Just pick the important items. How long should the sprint retro take? The meeting length may vary depending on the length of your sprint, may vary depending on the size of your team or how long the team has been working together. You may have a 30 minute retro if your team is doing one week sprints or two week sprints may have a one hour retro. For teams that have been working together longer and have less change, they may only need a 30 minute retro once every other sprint. For new teams, they may need an hour-long retro at the end of every single sprint. It really just depends. In review, the three points of the sprint retro. What are the things you should stop doing? What are the things you should start doing? And what are the things that you should continue doing? And keep in mind that when you do this, it should be focused on team process, not on calling out individuals. Don't make too many changes. You don't want to completely reinvent the entire sprint process on every sprint. Thanks for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you've learned something about sprint retrospectives. Be sure to check out Agile Planner, Agile and Scrum Management Software, available at agileplanner.com.